All right, in this video, we're going to be solving a stoichiometry problem that's actually going to be involving an enthalpy of the reaction and eventually calculating the heat capacity. So this is a very a typical problem that involves the delta H or the enthalpy of the reaction, and you have to actually figure out how much heat is either released or required to make sure to that that reaction takes place. Now, the question reads, they calculate the amount of heat released. So when it says heat released, what type of reaction would that be? Well, it's going to be an exothermic reaction because that's when you release the heat. When 10.5 grams of sample of ethanol is burned in a bomb calorimetry, so the bomb calorimetry is when you do, uh, you do the reactions in, at a constant volume, so there's no change in the volume. According to the following reaction, where we got this C2H5OH, so that's your ethanol, burning in the presence of an oxygen, and it's making a carbon dioxide in the water, so then turns out everything is going to be and the heat of the reaction for this particular one is negative 12 35 and that uh, has a negative sign that means it's also an exothermic. Now obviously this uh, delta H is 1235 kilojoules per mole. All right, so one mole of ethanol when it's burned it produces that much heat. Now I don't really know if we have exactly one mole because what the question tells you you have 10.5 grams of the ethanol and assuming the oxygen that you have in there is in excess. Okay, so you may want to go ahead and calculate the moles of ethanol. So once you know the moles of ethanol, you should be able to figure out how much actual heat you will be producing. So how would you find the grams to moles? If I'm given the grams and I'm trying to go to the moles, what's the equation? What's the conversion factor we use? Uh, well, we'll be using either the molar mass or the atomic mass, depending on what type of compound you have. If it's an element, so you use atomic mass. If it's in a compound, you use molar mass. So I'll start out with finding the molar mass of C2H5OH. So C2OHO5, uh, the molar mass of that is going to be, it's so got tw uh, 12 for the carbon, so 2 times 12, and then you have 6 hydrogen, so 6 times 1, and then you have 16 coming from the oxygen, so that's going to be a total of 46 grams per mole. All right, so make sure you have the molar mass of the compound calculated. And then let's start with 10.5 grams of C2H5OH, that's your starting material. And then in the first step, I'm going to convert this to moles, so I'll have moles of C2H5OH on the top, and I need to get rid of grams, so grams of C2H5OH goes on the bottom. Okay, and then you fill in the numbers, 46 goes with the grams, so I have 46 here, and one goes with the moles there, and in doing so, your grams will cancel out. Now you have the moles of your ethanol. Now, the delta H that's given to you is in kilojoules per mole so that's exactly how you want to be in because the when you set it up the moles can be cancelled out easily so your next equality here is just going to be negative 1235 kilojoules per mole because one mole of ethanol actually produces 1235 kilojoules of heat all right so then just go ahead and cancel out the moles here and then all you really got to do is just do the calculation there where you have 10.5 times 1235 and divided by 46 and that gives you 282 kilojoules all right so that's going to be negative 282 kilojoules of energy that's going to be released so the value of q here is going to be 282 kilojoules. So you don't really have to include the negative sign because that's more or less tells you the energy is being released. You already know the energy is being released now, so you can just say, okay, it's a 282 kilojoules of energy released when you burn this 10.5 kilojoules, uh, 10.5 grams of ethanol. 
Okay, so that's first part of your question. And obviously, if you were given the the grams of ethanol and the grams of oxygen, then you have to do uh, using uh, you have to figure out how much energy would be produced using the oxygen as well. So in that case, you run into and a limiting reactant and an excess reactant. And in whichever case you make the lower amount or lower energy produced, that's going to be your limiting reactant and that's how much actual energy would be released in that particular case. But here, oxygen was an excess, so only factor that determines the amount of energy produced was the ethanol. Okay, well, the, the second part of the question says how much energy, how, what's going to be the heat capacity of that uh, calorimetry? Okay, well, it tells us the temperature rises from 15.0 uh, to 57.4, and you have to determine the heat capacity of that calorimetry. Okay, well, I can, all that energy that's released by burning the ethanol is being absorbed by the calorimetry. So that's how you want to look at it. So then I can say my Q is going to be equal to C times delta T. That's going to be your equation for the calorimetry, where C is your heat capacity. And uh, your delta T is going to be the change in temperature, which we'll say is going to be T final minus T initial. Your T final is 57.4, and your T initial is going to be 15.0. So when you do this math, we'll have 57.4 minus 15.0, and that comes out to be 42.4 degrees Celsius. Okay, so I we actually know the Q, and we also know the delta T now, and all we really got to do is just go ahead and plug it in and figure out what the C going to be. So your Q was 282 kilojoules, so I'll go ahead and write that down. 282 kilojoules and your delta T is going to be 42.4 degrees Celsius. Okay, so when you do this math, 282 divided by 42.4 gives you 6.65 kilojoules. 6.65 kilojoules per degree Celsius. Now there's a good chance they may ask you that in joules, so when you get rid of kilo, it's going to be multiplying by a thousand so that's going to be 6650 joules per degree celsius so that's going to be your specific heat capacity uh, just the heat capacity of the calorimetry that you are using in this particular case all right so hopefully this video is helpful if you have any questions uh, relating to the calculations or any questions related to the concepts uh, leave the comments in the section